Hey, Worship Leader, welcome back to the channel today. I get to hang out, and so do you, with Worship Leader Hangout. Yes, I do yes. too. Yeah, let's Man, do this. I'm pumped. Let's just hang out. Let's hang out. What but do you let's have about? a topic. What do you want to talk about? I was thinking, you know what I don't know about you? I know a lot, because we've hung out a lot. <laughs> but um, not enough. But enough. Not enough. <laughs> enough to know some things. But I've also seen your worship space. But I don't know your your schedule like what you do as far as like prepping your team, prepping your band, song selection well, process. I was hoping that you would give me a schedule and then I would stick with it. You would stick with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. here, I didn't do that. Okay. I did not. I didn't. But so, so, yeah, I mean, you're talking about like a weekly type of schedule or yeah, so like, well, first of all, yes, weekly. That, that's what I want to know. Like, what okay. do you do? What do you do during the week to get it's not, not, I don't need to know everything you need to do. We don't need to know your business, but what we do want to know is like, how do you prep your team? How do, Sunday's coming? Right. How do you, how do you, what's your process? For songs? I was going to start with my alarm goes off at seven. I don't get up till seven Oh nine. Cause that's when the second one goes off <laughs> and then we take the kids to school and then I finally get to church after somewhat of a workout. And then, so you take the kids to school on Sunday. On Sunday. Oh wait, oh wait, no, this is Monday. Okay. This is during the week. <laughs> Sunday. No, we ain't got to Sunday yet. Monday. I literally do nothing because that's my day off. Oh, congratulations. Sometimes, sometimes I work on worship leader hangout stuff because I have a baby and that's right. for some reason, God created babies that need so much attention. I don't know why they do that. I don't, I don't know why they do that either. <laughs> So sometimes I do get to like when he's napping, I get to work on the channel stuff and edit some videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this past Monday is when I was going to edit. Is something shaking? <laughs> it's not on my end. Can you hear that for real? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> it sounds like a helicopter's in your room. I legit think that they're jackhammering Jack outside. <laughs> I'm and not on hilarious. a second level in New York. You know, usually people, when yeah. that happens, they're like, oh, the noise. And I'm like, I can't hear a dang thing. Can't hear anything. Well, I heard that up. like a helicopter was no, in your was... room. That's what it's. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think, well, they are working on So, I was going to say, like, are they? do we need to record this video another time? <laughs> they are building a courtyard, but I didn't think they're going to be jackhammering. So let's just try. And if they let's, start let's again, try. If we it starts can do again, it. we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. But I just shared a story on Instagram with you. So you can, <laughs> that's you hilarious. Can share, you can share. The first part of my week, I really try to work toward the Sunday. Mm. And then the second yep. half of the week's like Thursday and Friday, even though rehearsals coming up on Thursday night, Thursday and Friday, I really try to work on other weeks or like long projects, you know, things that are things that are coming up later on in life. Two weeks later. Yeah, I, I wanted to get a haircut today, but that didn't that did not happen. No, I cut my hair two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Like the same week we were gonna do this before. Yeah. And, and now, now it's already grown. <laughs> I look like a freaking animal now. I don't know what I was wearing, but hey, y'all. I mean, we're recording. We're back. I was just gonna pick up where we left off. Oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, because I'm gonna edit this together. So we're, oh, it's, it's two weeks gosh. later. It's not one week later because the first week was your fail. No, with the jackhammer, was... <laughs> with the jackhammer, and then uh, you invited the jackhammer people to your your office. <laughs> I did. I said, you know, why don't you just run that in here? Yeah, let's just let's just run that in the studio. In the studio, and, <laughs> and then we we bumped it a week to record uh, mm -hmm. later, and then yeah. that was my bad because I it was on my calendar, but I knew I had lunch with my dad that day, and I woke up and that's all I cared about. I was like, oh, I just got to eat lunch with my dad. I'm you gonna just work want, on some you stuff. You just care about going to eat. That's it. <sighs> that's it. But yeah, what I I think what I was trying to get to is sometimes. Sorry, I'm just plugging my computer in. Sometimes you don't quite know exactly what the week's going to look like. Wednesday's fun because uh, one, once I come from the gym on Wednesday morning, I grab a potential intern. He might be an intern one day. Uh, but he comes and hangs out. He does school online at Full Sail, and he comes and hangs out on Wednesday all day. And okay. he's learning sound engineer type stuff. He's learning... He's a great guitarist. He's getting better. It's the guy that you actually gifted uh, one of your packs to, one of your yeah. sound packs. What do you call That's those? Right. The Expanse Pack. Expanse Pack. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, ad. Insert ad right here. I need I need to give him the brand new to 
HaywardSleader.com. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Essentials Pack. I need to the go essentials? and get that. Oh, my that is, gosh. That's the essentials that he needs. Yeah. Jeez. What are we doing right now? So, <laughs> no, he sounds great. Man, ever since you gave him that, his tone has just excelled. So, anyway. It's just expanding. His tone it is. is. Just, yeah, it's yeah. gotten bigger. Yeah. Bigger tone. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he, he, so he helps me out a lot on Tuesday, I mean on Wednesday, and our Wednesday is what needs to be either finished or completed for Thursday night because he's, help, he's here to help me. I know I talk a lot about lights on the channel, my channel. I know I talk about other things that have to do with like production setup and this and that stuff, but there are... A lot of that I just don't like to do mm. because there's a lot that I do like to do. I, I mostly like to be on the music side of things, <laughs> but, but as a worship leader with no other worship staff, other than two people, we pay musicians that we pay. Um, I have to do it all. And so it's really cool when I have people like him that are, that are willing to volunteer their time. Like he is volunteering his time to be here all day on Wednesday. Wow. And wants to, which is great. That's, you know, it reminds me of myself back then um, because he wants to be a, he wants to own a studio and like an audio, like a production, not a production, but a, uh, yeah, like a music studio. <clears throat> yeah. And then also run sound and do things like that. He's also a great guitarist. So he's just, he's just trying to do the whole thing. And so that's cool. So I utilize that and teach him all the things, lighting, purpose in here, live stream setup, sound, obviously those kinds of things. So I'm, letting him get involved in that, which is a lot of fun. Nice. Um, and then, so that ends up being my Wednesday. Sometimes there's a meeting here or there on Wednesday. Sometimes we, he and I like actually plan music for upcoming weeks on those days because he's a great musician. And so it's good to have some feedback on that. We'll do that. Um, Thursday morning, typically we also, I'm sorry, let me take, say this one thing that covers all days is we are allowed to spend our nine to 10 hour in complete, like just prayer, like whatever we want to do mm. in, in the word and in prayer. We don't have to, especially if something else is going on, but we are allowed to literally just sit and pray if we want to between that hour. So I really yeah. try to take advantage of that as much as possible. And that's, so, that, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I am a human. So sometimes I don't like I get here and I'm like, Oh, what do I got to do? Uh, all this stuff. And, yeah, stuff. Like, but, but I have noticed when I do give God that time, then sometimes he just allows things to just fall into place the rest of the day a lot better Yeah. than, I don't know. Anyway, I have yeah. noticed that. So then on Thursday, it is a me day, just pretty much just me here. Uh, I, I like to start out the day getting everything ready for rehearsal, like early. Um, because then, then I can get into different projects throughout the day, like whatever needs to be done, whatever I'm working on. Sometimes I'll help other staff, uh, you know, get some things or help them figure out some things, whether it's production related or whatever. Um, I just kind of float around Thursday is not a huge day for me necessarily, even though we have rehearsal because I guess, cause I have just a little bit more time that extends on through cause I don't go home mm. on Thursday. Uh, but I also work on a lot of music on Thursday. That's yeah. usually Thursday is when I'm planning for future weeks. Sometimes when I'm checking the current week and I might even make a change on Thursday, like you just never know what might happen. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we that happens. With that us. happens. So, so that's yeah. That's pretty much my week. Friday, I do I do come into work on Friday. Um, I try to make Friday one of those not heavy projects that's gonna uh, cause us to take something apart. But if there is something that doesn't that wouldn't hinder Sunday if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. then we'll get into it on Friday, whatever it may be. But overall, just making sure things are ready for for Sunday. And then I do website stuff a lot on Fridays, um, a lot of online stuff. Sometimes I'll schedule most of the time by Friday. I just don't even feel like looking at planning center. Right. Right. So I'll do other things <clears throat> that are not going to hinder Sunday. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, that Friday, and then also Friday is when most of my videos will involve what I'm doing here at the church. So, like, for example, we just got some a cheap in-ear system for our youth room, right? Mm, okay. And so today, I after this, I might plop that on the table and do an unboxing and then, like, a setup, like, do cheap in-ears matter or, like, do cheap in-ears work. Right. You know, okay. will they work for your for your team rather than paying, like, $700 for uh, one set? Um, nice. These are, you know, this is one of those cheaper ones on Amazon, but right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, uh, okay, I don't so, know, but yeah. Well, I had to, I had another question for you because this is really just me to you. I just want to know because I never asked you this question. We've we've traveled the world together, and I don't know this. Yes, but, um, we have traveled the world. <laughs> I mean, not one everyone direction. has seen someone else vomit seven times, but anyway, what is your song selection process like? <laughs> Like you talked about doing music, but how do songs make it from not something you sing to something you sing? Uh, I usually just put a bunch of names in a box. Yeah. And then I'm like, Holy Spirit, guide me. And then, you are welcome. And then I just I pull out the song titles, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That is not how I do it, even though I feel like doing that most weeks. <laughs> um, a lot of A lot of my planning, I'll say maybe, I don't know arbitrary number 80 percent of my planning for songs is me sitting down at the piano just literally just asking god what do you want to do this <clears throat> whatever week it may be that i'm on it might be three weeks four weeks out that i'm working on that week and or it might be the week of sometimes it's, it gets crazy around here sometimes but most of the time it's like two to three weeks out and i'll sit down and I pray and I do, you know, do the whole thing as we should do. And I'll start looking at songs that, that we have. On. So this is selection for that Sunday or for yeah. a Sunday. So I'll look <clears throat> at songs we have and see like, all right, well, from what I've been reading or for what, you know, God's put on my heart, like what goes with that? Or if I do know the series and I do know some scripture from the series, then that also helps me plan because I can, I can see what songs work with that. A new song, because mm -hmm. I know, aren't you about to put a video out about this? Or didn't you just put a video out about this? It'll it'll be coming out, or it will have already come no. out. No. Oh, really? Did it already come out? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't remember. <laughs> I have one in the queue. I just don't know when it's coming out yet. Okay. Yeah. Of, uh, like adding brand new songs? Yeah. Well, you also have a paper that's probably still in my backpack on song selection and that that's, kind of thing. That's true. From, that's true. what was that, 2019? It's been a while. It's when I came, you need <laughs> anyway, I should just read that off. Well, what I do is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it says your church name at the top. That's right. Uh, what well, for a new song, new songs are fun. I, I really do enjoy new songs because I pull the new song in the planning center. Once I've heard it, if so, when I hear a song, I typically know musically lyrically, whether that song is going to work for my church. Right away. Mm. It, I, I will, for the most part, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then we do it and it's amazing. Sometimes I'm like, that song is 100% perfect for my church. Yeah. We do it and it flops. Or And then I'm like, well, it flopped because <laughs> nobody knew it. And then we do it 18 more times and then they're just like, still flop. Like it. It's still flop. Yeah. Or, you know, um, that's happened to a, a few songs, uh, I should say. Not many at all. But I usually know. Like, yes, this song will work. So there's not really, and then, and then all the other things come involved. Like when I make that happen, as far as whether it's a sermon or some kind of overall message that we're, we're singing about in that particular set, mm -hmm. the key is involved in that. Like what key are we doing this? And what songs does it fit with that still in the same context of why we are doing it for that Sunday? So all that's involved. When I give it to my team, I add it on Planning Center. I make sure we have a good chord chart. I pull in the CCLI chord chart. If I don't like it, I'll make my own. I'll make my own using the uh, Planning Center chord building thing, which yeah. you can now edit those on iPad with Music Stand. Oh, nice. You can edit. Really cool. Yes. You can Sweet. edit your chord charts on Music Stand now. I'm going to make um, a video right now. I'm going to make a video about it. You should make a <laughs> tutorial. 
And then, so I make sure we have core chart. I send it out to my team via email, text, all the above. I, so when I send it to them, though, I'm like, hey, this is a brand new song for us. Mm-hmm. Learn mm-hmm. this song. Or, uh, no, I, I say, I say, you know, learn the song. We are going to do this soon. Yeah. Sooner than later, when, whenever it may be. Sometimes, because of the kind of our culture, sometimes I'll add a song and say, hey, this song is coming up in two weeks. Mm. We need it ready for that rehearsal, so make sure you know it. And then I make sure I know it. And a lot of times the reason why I do a chord chart for a song is to make sure that I know that song in and out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, even even if the CCL <laughs> chord chart, the song select chord chart is great, sometimes I still redo it anyway. Right. And then because I also like the select the numbers tab. Um, so I make the chord chart, select the numbers tab. I Sometimes I change the arrangement or change chord progression sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so that, and then, so then I give it to my team and then how we get it in front of the church. Typically, typically there are some things you can do. You can, you know, put it, if it's a fast song, put it in your pre-roll, what is it called? Like walk-in music playlist. You can do all kinds of things like that. You can even send it out to, you know, uh, key people in your church and say, Hey, I'm, we're going to be doing this song soon that I do that sometimes, uh, check the song out. And then that way, when when we do it, they're ready. They know the song. Sometimes yeah. they already know the song because we don't do insanely new stuff. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then when we roll that out, we'll do it on a Sunday. And I don't expect a lot of participation. Right, right. So I do. I make sure it's one that it's in a period of time or in a, the part of the service that where I'm, I'm not expecting a lot of participation. But then, but it won't like kind of break the momentum of what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I might say I might read some scripture about it, about like what the song's about, and and say you're welcome to worship with us, or just say worship with us if you know it, or whatever. And I mean, they, you know, yeah, because yeah, most yeah. of your people are not listening to right <laughs> worship no, music. Okay, so what? Just before I go to the next question, this is a, a little a little question. Do you have a song in the queue that you haven't introduced, but you know you're going to? Yeah, I do. Um, it is called. It's not the elevation never lost, but it's the other one, like five years old. They it's they also it's never lost slash champion because they go in the champion. Okay, but I think it's a church. Let me pull it up on YouTube. He is my faithful. Father, something like that. And then the yeah. chorus is Don't sing it too good, we'll get copyrighted. I know. All right. Great song. Cool. Great song. Alright, so one more question. So I want to know how a song goes from not being something you do to something you do. You just gave us that. How does a person go from not being on your worship team to being on your worship team? I have no idea. I don't even know how What's I got audition? these people. What's your audition process? If I'm coming and you don't know me, how how does somebody be, get on your worship team? Uh, first of all, so this is a two part answer. I'll go ahead and give the weird part first. (laughs) Somebody's got to want to be on the team. I'm not going to go fishing and Mm. taking you out to a million dinners and convincing you and this and that. Like, I don't, that's not me. If I ask one time for you to be on the team and you're like, ah, then I'm like, all right, I'll talk to you later. Then yeah, because I don't I want people to want to be there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And and I've had people that are like, I want to do an audition and this and that. I'm like I and I sit down with them right with them right there, and they put in a or they came and asked me, and then I I sat down with them right there and sent them the link to the application, all that stuff. They did not apply. They did not apply for like three weeks or four weeks, right? Mm-hmm. And still ask me about being on the worship team. I was like, we got to do the application. <laughs> so, so this is kind of all, I mean, obviously you see that I have an application process. Yeah. So you got to do an application and that person just kind of, that's, I want the dedication. Like I've also sent the application to people. They filled it out right away. I'm able to look at it and be like, wow, okay, great. And then once they fill out that application, then I can schedule their audition. Yeah. I'll I'll never do an audition without an application unless I hear them play somewhere else or I just or I've heard them play and I know that they're a great musician or a great vocalist mm. 
I still let them do the op- application just because I need some information from them, even right. as a volunteer. And then we go from that schedule and whatever. But if they, if they're brand new and I've never heard them, then we do an audition. Audition process is super simple. I hear them sing. We do a, so this is vocalist. I hear them sing. We do pitch matching. We do a range test. And then they sing with me. Um, musicians, they play or yeah, they play for two minutes by themselves. Nothing, no track, no anything. I could tell right away especially drummers. When I give them that two minutes, I know within the first 30 seconds, if I'm putting them on my team, which is great. So try that. Um, and then I do a song on a track with nobody, but the track. And then I do a song with myself and me and just like a keyboard or a guitar. And then if the team is there, we'll do a song with the team, but most of the time they're not. And then once they've, pa- oh, I'm doing inter- interview. If they pass the interview, they seem like a great person. Their heart's there. They want to be on the team. It's not just about a show, this and that, just all the above. They're Christian. It's great. It's great if your church musicians are Christians. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, you, would, I mean, you, you would think you that's think, a joke. But but it's you, not. A lot of time. It's, yeah. it's great if they are. Hey, if, if some people are wondering, I think one statement has, has really helped. I believe everybody on stage is a worship leader. Because they're leading mm-hmm. the music, and you they can't are. lead someone in worship that you don't know yourself. You can't yes. lead somebody where you haven't been. So that's that's pretty much all you need to know about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, yeah, once they pass all that stuff, then we I start scheduling them. And if the vocalist isn't quite to the level that I want them to be, they become a red shirt. And the requirement for the red shirt is to be at every rehearsal and oh. every. And be there for sound check every Sunday morning. Minimum every rehearsal. But, you know, I get the Sunday morning thing if they have families, this and that. And the reason why is it shows dedication. It also gives them time to practice. And in the past, I've had several red, red shirts where one of my other vocalists wasn't able to be there. Mm-hmm. And I pulled them on the stage for that rehearsal. And I said, yeah. you're singing Sunday. You're no longer a red shirt. That was great. There you, you know. go. Boom. Or, you know, I'll continue to help them. I, re- I try to resource as much as I can. We're doing a vocal workshop hopefully soon. We're doing a uh, sound workshop uh, on the 23rd of February, which is great. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Because our, our guys need it. They need that continuing education as volunteers. We don't have a full-time or a part-time or anything production manager. We, okay. we just have volunteers. Right. So that's, you know, production's a little different. It's mostly interview what do you what do you know? What do you love to do? What do you want to do? If they have no idea what they like to do or want to do, I typically start them as a stage manager mm, and okay. see where they like see their dedication. And not that that position is a low position, but it's not fully necessary because we can all check our own batteries and stuff. Um, and we we can designate somebody to move something on stage, but that person. If they show a lot of dedication, a lot of interest in other areas, I get them trained for the other other areas. If they are direct, they're like, I am interested. I want to, I want to do pro presenter. Then I don't bother with the stage manager stuff. I get them shadowing on pro presenter for like four weeks. Yeah. But I get them shadowing. And then if that person, you know, something happens, they don't show up or whatever, then they're running it. And typically I'm like, all right, that's it. You're good. Yeah. 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 Cool. So that it's, it's a it's a lot of just push them in the deep end. Yeah, um, I, I kind of like the uh, the red shirt idea because um, I have those uh, my my version of that, and I don't do that at all. So that might be something I I need to adjust because I, I kind of like that idea where um, I will do the audition process kind of the same way. I have my spiel. You know, if they're not really ready, I'm not ready to trust them on stage by themselves or to lead a song. I'll just say, I'll tell them that. And I say, I want to re-audition you. If you want to work on this and work on these few things, let's re-audition you. In the meantime, I would love for you to sing in the choir. You know, if it's not just horrible, you know, if they're like almost there, they just need some work. Um, But I don't really have a... they sing in the choir until then. Yeah. And we don't, I say choir compared to some churches, it's probably just a, it's like 12 people. Yeah. It's not, I just invite as many people as possible and usually 12 people show up. Um, doesn't, doesn't matter how I many still, people, I, I still would love to do that. I need to look into that, but we do that. We do a, a choir. Um, 
every fifth Sunday, not every oh, fifth, like but that. every every time there is a fifth Sunday in the month. Yes. Um, and then yes. We'll, we do one around Easter and around Christmas as well. So, you know, six or so times a year, they'll get to, to sing in the choir. But I really don't, cool. I don't really have a onboarding from the choir, like officially, because I usually left it to, if you want to re-audition, let me know and we'll re-audition. I right. like you. I don't pursue them after that. If they, if they work on the stuff, then they do it. But um, anyways, yeah, just think through this. That, that's helpful. I think the red shirt idea, whether you call it that or not, is still good just to see their commitment mm -hmm. to coming to rehearsal. Um, and it may show that you're investing in them as well. Like, oh, they actually want me here. I do want to work on this. Whereas some people yeah. are like, well, I didn't do well at the audition. They probably don't need me anyways, and they'll just give up. Um, and some people do that anyways, but sometimes if, if they really can't sing, I mean, that's when I just have to tell them like, yeah, uh, I record all the auditions Oh, nice! and for one person, I let them listen. And I said, I just asked them very nice, not like in a condescending or like sarcastic way. Yeah. But I said, listen, I need you to, I need you to answer this question. Like genuinely based on what you heard would you allow this person to lead a song or to sing on stage? That sounds, <laughs> I would mean, you, if you were me, would you allow you the horrible singer to sing this? That's what you're saying to them. And <laughs> they were like, no, never. And, was, and they know it's them. They're not stupid. And they're just like, okay, so what do I have to do? Usually if they're level headed and, mm -hmm. and they want to be, they still want to be a part of it. They're like, what do I have to do? And then we'll, we can talk about vocal lessons and steps that they can take yeah. to become a singer. You can become a singer. Anybody can become a singer. Yeah. Well, um, mm -hmm. I, I understand that. Well, I, I really do because I, well, I, yeah. I explain to them, I usually judge them on, I say judge or rate them on four different things, stage presence, timing, yeah. thing to the click. And then I have to explain a lot of times there's between tone and pitch. And, and those who struggle with pitch, I will say, you have a, if it's true, you have a beautiful tone quality of your voice, but you're just not hitting the notes. And I don't yeah. know if you can hear them or not. Can you? Let's try it again or something there, like that. Yeah, there's, um, there's so many variables into why. And you have to, I just explain it like yeah. all full out. Like, yes. Yeah, so this is what I'm hearing. I explain it all the way out. And if you can explain it, then they're going to be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. if you, if you don't know how to explain it or don't know how to communicate that, Right. Then that's when they're going to get hurt. Right. And be well, like, I, I, oh. I, had a, I had a friend in high school who was tone deaf. I mean, he just couldn't sing at well, all. Then but, you can't sing. I mean, but, the, he, but he loved to sing and he even took voice lessons. And, you know, me being a good friend, I was like, yeah, you should take voice lessons. And, and he really did work on his breathing and his tone got really good, but it never corrected the pitch ever. Then like he, could, he just couldn't hear it. Then, you, that, then that they can't do it. They can't learn. They yeah. can run. A, they can run a camera. Yeah, exactly. Or lights or pro presenter. You know, there's other areas for them. And usually yes. most people, I know people worry about this a lot as a worship leader, but most people are pretty level headed yeah. and, and are not like the American Idol home <laughs> right. singers that are like, no, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Mm -hmm. Most people, now there are some that will get hurt. And that's. Yeah. I, I had one, not at the church I'm at now, but the church I was at before is a very large church. And, um, Oh, that's another thing. Another takeaway. If you're listening to this, record your auditions. I don't do that currently. And really, you can do that for them. But I'm thinking it, it might be good for me because I've had auditions in the past where I'm like, also at the other church I was at, I auditioned someone and I had multiple people in there listening and she did great. And then on the Sunday, man, she could not hit the pitch. Like she, her nerves took it over. It could be, whatever. yeah, nerves, yeah. But she couldn't get over it, and it was like, hey, it was a church where we had five services, and we gave her the first two services to try it, and after that, I was like, we're just gonna have to do, we're gonna have to make some changes because it's not, it's yeah. not, it's not working. <laughs> no, I, I have been there where they nail the audition, yeah, and you're, and you hear them on a Sunday, and you're like, what but I, I wish I had happened? it recorded. I wish I had it recorded so I could go back, and some of them I just right. forget because it's like you may audition somebody a year earlier, and maybe they haven't sung in a while, you know, or right. whatever. So I think that's a good idea. I wrote it down. I might, I might start doing that as well, just because. So yeah. I'm getting value out of this video. Thank should you, I Chad. start a YouTube channel? You should, you should share some of these. 
<laughs> I have. The problem is I have, but yeah, they're so no one, old, nobody sees them. No one cares. I know. You're just going to have to go back and start remaking your old I will. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to start right now. Okay, that's it. Thank you yeah. for watching. Click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this onboarding songs and people into your worship ministry. <laughs> that's that's right. I that's like it. it. That's all you all need right. right there. Let's end the video. See y'all. God Appreciate is good. It. God yes. is good. Bye.